So according to today's Quinnipiac poll, the two most important issues in state government continue to be ethics reform and the passage of a property tax cap. Not coincidentally, those are also the top two issues on the governor's agenda for the rest of the session. Our next guest would also like to see both of those things passed before he heads home for the summer. Brian Kolb is the leader of the Assembly Republican Conference. Thanks very much for your time tonight, Assemblyman. Hi, Liz. Always a pleasure to be with you. It's great to see you. We haven't seen you in a while, so thanks for coming by. My pleasure. So, okay, let, let's start with, you know, they're the top three things, actually, the third being gay marriage, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's start with the property tax cap. We thought that there was a deal. It was ceremoniously announced, and uh, we haven't seen any passage of anything yet. So my question to you is, is there a deal? Well, I believe there's a deal, and until I hear differently, I believe that there's a deal because uh, we stood there uh, side and shoulder with uh, Governor Cuomo, and certainly that's my understanding, uh, and I'm not surprised, of course, as the sand shift in Albany, nothing's done till it's done, but certainly uh, right now I still believe that we will have a property tax cap bill uh, before the end of session. Okay, but, but the problem is, when are we going to have it, and what is it going to look like, right? I mean, it seems to me that because the Senate Majority Leader wasn't immediately embracing this measure, which, you know, hasn't been passed in either House yet, it leaves open the door to opponents like uh, NYSET, the Teachers Union, and then also the Assembly Democrats for maybe strengthening this sunset date that some of, the peop some of those who don't like the sunset date say is a poison pill. Well, certainly, you know, Liz, I got to tell you, you're probably too young for this, but uh, back in my office in Albany, I had this thing called a Ouija board. <laughs> and you take a pulse on the, the day, the hour, the minute, the second in terms of what's going to happen or not happen in Albany. And, and again, I think a lot of this is more posturing, uh, more theatrics, uh, that quite frankly, uh, it gets tiring. I think that uh, we need to move forward, get a bill out there for an up and down vote. We do have bills in print. We have the Governor Cuomo's original property tax cap bill. The right. Senate Republicans already passed that. We have the Assembly Democrats bill sponsored by Speaker Silver, which supposedly is the agreed upon bill. And certainly I think it's all about posturing the dealing with rent regulations, which uh, Senator Skelos has indicated that he's ready to uh, do a bill with uh, uh, the Assembly majority. But uh, it, all of this probably won't be finalized, per se, probably to the last week of session okay. based on the current pace and pulse of Albany. Okay, Assemblyman, I got to ask though about the Ouija board. Is that is that like, do you use that frequently? Is this a predictor of what, how does that work exactly? <laughs> I, it, you know, you think it's the emotion and what's in the air in Albany. I only use what's it in, in, uh, in Albany because that's the only place where you really can't predict anything with any certainty. And uh, certainly I think that's what I'm trying to focus on is any help I can get to predict the outcome in Albany is would be great. Okay, well, you know, that's probably as accurate as any kind of predictor in Albany, given the way things are going these days. Uh, your conference, can you assure us at this point that your entire conference will be voting yes on the property tax cap, even though I know you maybe have some reservations because there's no mandate relief in there, and particularly for some of the upstate uh, elected officials we have been seeing, mayors and, and, and uh, school executives, et cetera, have been saying we're concerned that we're going to go broke if you put this cap in place without that. Well, I think that there's overwhelmingly support, uh, overwhelmingly support for the property tax cap. I think uh, there's uh, a lot of our members, including myself, that really would like mandate relief right along next to it or at least the, the very next day. Uh, because I think mandate relief is extremely important to local school districts and county governments. Uh, but certainly uh, our conference was the originator of the property tax cap idea uh, several years ago. We've been pushing this uh, because we have felt and saw the burden on high property taxes to homeowners and to seniors all across the state. Uh, so certainly I, we, we've had unwavering support. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to get the uh, Assembly Democrat majority to get its act together and let's have, a, let's have an up and down vote. Uh, you, we're going to talk about uh, marriage equality uh, in a few minutes. We've had an up and down vote on same sex marriage. Why can't we have an up and down vote on Governor Cuomo's property tax mm -hmm. cap bills, Speaker Silver's property tax b cap bill? Let's bring it out and see where the votes are. Okay, well, that, that's actually interesting. Let, let, let's skip to marriage for a second. Has anyone in your conference been contacted by the governor? I, I know that the real focus has been the Senate, and the real concern, of course, is in the Senate because this measure has failed there in 2009. The measure has passed three times in your house with even actually a handful of votes from your colleagues, from your own Republican members. Uh, do you have any feeling about how many votes there are now in your conference? 
Are you referring to a marriage equality? I am, yeah. Well, I, I certainly think there's a, a handful. Uh, certainly, I think uh, the majority of the new members that have joined us in uh, the assembly are opposed to uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, but certainly uh, there's been uh, some of our members that support it, uh, supported it uh, in prior votes. Uh, really, I think uh, the pulse is really going to be in the state Senate, whether they bring uh, the bill out or not. But I would also say, uh, Liz, that the vote in the assembly is going to be closer than it was before. Right. Uh, because of the new members we've brought into the conference. Uh, plus some rate currently right now uh, there's what now four, four open uh, Democrat seats yep. that won't be voting on this issue if we vote on this issue before the end of June and that really shrinks that margin that they had on a prior vote so I think that there's going to be work to be done uh, in the assembly uh, as much as there's work to be done in the state senate. Yeah that's interesting do you think that that's actually something that's being overlooked and perhaps to the peril of advocates who are who are focused so and the governor focused so laser-like on the Senate that perhaps they're overlooking this this maybe problem in the assembly. Well, I can't read their minds, but I think it would be uh, not wise to overlook this uh, new change in the assembly, uh, because there were some Democrat assembly members uh, that took a walk on the first vote. Mm -hmm. And who knows where it'll be uh, if we we're to vote again on it this year. That doesn't mean that the speaker won't twist arms to make sure it passes. Uh, but I'm, what I'm saying to you, I don't think it's a slam dunk as it was in prior votes. Yeah, and that's what, so the governor has not been calling you, however, or calling members of, of your conference the way he has been on, on the other side of the Capitol? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and has the speaker given you any indication about when that bill, if that bill, will come up to the floor for a vote? Because I, I don't sense, I know that Assemblymember Danny O'Donnell just today is circulating a bill seeking sponsors, seeking his colleagues to get on to his same-sex marriage bill. That's the one that has passed twice and then subsequently a program bill. I, I just wonder, you know, if, if uh, there's movement. I don't sense that there's a great urgency. I don't think the Assembly wants to go first again and then only to see things uh, fail in the Senate to make make people take a controversial vote when they're headed into an election year. Well, I think that's a, a very accurate analysis. I think the speaker has also even said that he wants to see what the Senate's going to do with the bill first uh, because he believes that's where the, the real uh, decision point's going to be made is the uh, state Senate. Right. And I think he's saying, I believe I can get enough votes assuming it does pass the state Senate, but I think also that gives him more leverage to twist some arms with his own conference for those that may not necessarily vote for uh, marriage equality if, the, if they voted first. So uh, there's a little bit of strategy going on in my opinion, of course it's just my opinion, with uh, how the speaker is positioning himself in his conference. Yeah, and, and how many times uh, do you actually speak with the governor, with the governor's office? We've seen zero actually public leaders meetings lately and and that's kind of unusual I mean usually when you come down to the wire you see at least a, a few more uh, meetings uh, you've seen the governor meet with Dean Skelos behind closed doors you've you've heard about meetings but you're not seeing a lot of public action uh, what can you tell us about that well I think that's really part of Governor Cuomo's uh, strategy I think that uh, he believes that he only needs to negotiate uh, with the two majorities. Uh, so that's why I always say uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm. Uh, certainly I understand the majority concept in the state legislature, uh, but I think uh, the governor and prior governors have missed opportunities to uh, seek out help from the minorities in both houses of the legislature, get input on different pieces of legislation uh, more proactively. Again, we understand that we're not in charge, but I think we certainly have a lot of ideas on how we can make a bill better. Uh, I'll just use redistricting as an example. I sent two different letters to Governor Cuomo suggesting some modifications to his program bill. Uh, to this day, I still have not received a phone call or any response uh, to uh, my suggestions to make that a stronger nonpartisan bill. Uh, that gets a little bit uh, frustrating and and again I think that uh, as far as having a public meeting um, I could I could shall we say live with some of that if we had more direct dialogue before legislation is crafted uh, certainly to provide some input 
uh, it, it through how to make a bill better. Yeah, you know, I'm actually surprised a little bit because when you have a situation where there's no more veto-proof majority in, in the assembly majority, that's 99 members that they've got now, and you might have something close like gay marriage in the assembly, then you might think that the, that the executive branch would be reaching out at least to have a dialogue and a relationship with, with the minority. I, I just want to ask you quickly before we run out of time, any word on ethics and ethics reform that you're hearing? Well, we're hearing that uh, they're having a, a dialogue on ethics and they, they're close, uh, but certainly the final provisions in terms of uh, I have not been had access to anything that either is a major sticking point or or a major agreement. Uh, certainly I know the conversation is going on. I think that's a disappointment where I think uh, originally a couple months ago the, we heard from the governor's office but then we continually reach back out to the governor's office and if you will no one's uh, are returning the call so mm. to speak. So we've been trying to be proactive but uh, certainly uh, it's a two-way street in terms of communication and in this particular case uh, on the ethics reform I think the, the governor's office or his his folks have not been as proactive with us in terms of uh, having a conversation about ethics. Interesting. Okay, well Assembly Minority Leader Brian Kolb will be uh, talking to you again soon I'm sure but thanks very much for joining us. Always a pleasure Liz.